charging your phone in the Arndale. Why? We're not allowed to. No, you're not. It's against the Arndale rules. Give me my phone back. Hey, number one, get out of my face. Number two, you want your phone back, tell your mother to come and get it off me. Where's your mum then? I don't know. Can you find out where she is? No. Why can't you just ring her or something? Do you see the phone in my hand? Excuse me, I've already told you once. You need to be quiet. Charlie, I'm really sorry I'm late to pick you up. Where'd you be? Listen, I just got held up. Right, can you have this argument elsewhere, please? Uh, hang on a minute. Don't speak to him like that. We're not even wait anymore. It's all right, we're going back. Come on. Did anyone else just see him take my phone? I What's swear that's, that it? I swear that's legal or something. I'm fuming. He was only charging it. He's actually out of order. What are you going to tell your mum? Oh God, she's going to be furious. Can't you just apologise to him? Please? Why should I? I did nothing wrong. You come this way, you reach the top of the hill, you'll notice the monument to Sam Bamford which looks out over the centre of Middleton and the road to Manchester. It was constructed in 1877, which was five years after Sam's death. Sam had suffered more than most, been arrested at least three times, taken to five different prisons in chains, and eventually was able to hold his head up anywhere in the country. The arrest was made and Sam was taken down to the Asherton Arms. And at the Asherton Arms, he was given a pint, which was traditional, before he was put in the, in the carriage and manacled. And we'll go in that direction now down towards the Asherton Arms. Anyway, I can't get another. My mum's struggling since my dad left, 
and she hasn't even got enough money to feed us and she's just found out that when I go back to school I won't be getting free school dinners. My mum volunteers at the Lighthouse Project in mid. They've got a food bank there, maybe they could help. Ooh, we're not tram. What's going on? None of your business. I beg your pardon, young lady. You need to learn some manners, you do. And don't think I didn't see you lot in Middleton Arndale making all that noise. And my husband's upstairs in bed, he's on nights and he needs his sleep. It's not our fault. But we weren't causing any trouble. You lot cleared off and trying to get me head down here. Thought you was in bed. I would have been if you lot had stopped coming round, kicking off. Now move. Ew, what are you doing, you little muppet? All right, that's it. I've had enough. I'm not putting up with this all summer. Excuse me, what are you looking for? Anything about him? I'm looking for Sam Bamford. There's a Sam Bamford section over there with loads of information about his life and poetry. Oh, could you help me please? Of course, Sam Bamford is of particular interest to me. Follow me please. And so it begins. What? Six weeks of freedom. Yeah, and then exams when we go back. Don't talk to me about exams. I've been told I can't do this and I can't do that. So they told me I can't do drama because it's not ac ac academic. That's the one. Well, my parents got a letter home from school saying that the school don't recommend the choices that I've made. I got one of them saying it'd be best if I chose the options I got the best grades in. What happened to options? It's supposed to be our choice. We can't let it happen. It's our future, it's us doing the work. But what can we do? No one listens to us. There's this girl in sixth form. She gives advice on what your rights are and if you get stopped by the police and stuff like that. I'll text her and see what she says. There you go, ladies. On the house. It's water! Yeah, but it's a thought that counts. Come on. Go away. What do you think you're doing giving free water away? Come on, stop flirting and get some work done. Can you get that for me, please? A group of girls being denied the right to choose which GCSEs they take by their parents or school. Both. The school can only suggest subjects. It's their choice at the end of the day. Tell them to make loads of noise, bang around the house and sulk until their parents agree with them and don't take no for an answer. <laughs> Text back. Just convince their parents to support them on their options. Anne died October 15th, 1834. Jemima died September 23rd, 1862. Samuel died April 13th, 1872. My angel child, my angel child, gentle, affectionate and mild. Her arms around my neck she coiled and looked and wept, my angel child. 
She wept that we so soon must part. She knew that death was near her heart. We were but three, O oh God above. Could they not spur this group of love? Sweet flowers to her grave I bring. To bloom, to die in early spring. All beautiful, pure and mild. Like my lost dove, my angel child. She was well young when she died. Far too young, lass, with much to achieve. She was only in her 26 year when she fell from her nest. My mum was only 35 when she died. Aye. Uh, death doesn't judge on age or wealth. My mother was about the same age when she died from the smallpox and was sent to a place like this, where all are equal. Pity it's not like that here now. Pity never put bread on table, lass. Is your mum all right about your phone? I couldn't tell her. She's really not all right. She's worried about money all the time and it's making her ill. Isn't it, Joe? Yeah, she wouldn't give me any money for a bunch of kids to fix my bike. Oh, my mum ever goes in about his bills. Oh, I'm getting sick of her, me. If she starts again, she better watch what's going to happen. No, 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 them girls threaten me. What are you doing threatening our Ruby? I'm not. Listen, our Ruby's not from round here, you know. She's a good un. No, that's why she's a spoiled little brat. Right, I've just had enough. I'm going to phone the council. You're joking, aren't you? We ain't even done now. You two, get in and you lot, scarf off. I see you're a wordsmith like myself, lass. A what? A rhymester. A poet. I just write about things I see happening around me. Well, that's all I've heard on. It's so peaceful up here. I come up here and write all the time. I've always found the place a peace, lass. I spent many hours of reflection up here when we finally laid her hand to rest. What do you mean, finally? Well... We kept her at home for a month. You had your dead daughter's body in your house for a month? We didn't have to. But I weren't risking Kank again his grubby little hands on her. The Crankies? I said Kanky's cloth ears. Well, who's he? He were a mon with no scruples and morals. He took recent dead from the resting place. Like a grave robber? Aye, lass, like a grave robber. Him and his cronies. What did they do? If they must know, I tell thee. They dug a little hole where Ed were. Then they broke through and they had a pole with a noose on end. They put that noose around Ed and pull them up through it all. It must have been like being born again for poor souls. Why would he do that? For money. See that wall over there? To the side of that skanky's ginnel. They'd get them all there and take them down to River Rook, where a boat would be waiting. Then they'd sail them down to medical universities in Manchester and them all for money. Fresh your body, more money they get. But he weren't getting his grubby hands on my daughter. Are you sure? It's too many for me. From Tommy's. Tommy's. Go on then. Do it. Here. Have a muffin. Nice one. Come on. How big's that beard? Why has he got all this seal lord or something? I bet he was dead rich. I know what would make him look better. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? 
drawing. What do you mean drawing? You can't draw on him. Why not? Do you not know who this is? No. Do any of you not know who this is? This is Sam Bamford. He fought for us. Why, but was he a boxer or something? No. Don't be smart. No, he wasn't a boxer. He lived up on Cheapside. He drank on the old bus head over 200 years ago. He got people to listen to us. No one listens to us. What do you mean? Me and my sister get told to move on from everywhere we go. I'm not even doing anything wrong. My friend's sister got kicked out of a shopping centre yesterday. It's not fair. No, it isn't fair and we need to do something to change it. The strength and unity loss. We can't do anything on our own. We need to work together. Sam will help us. We need to fight for representation. Go get your sisters, go get your friends' sisters and tell them to meet me, Samantha. Go on, get texting. Tell them to meet me at the 24 steps tomorrow, 12 o'clock noon. Go on. I'm just fed up of it all. I feel like a hamster. What are you on about? We just keep going round in circles. We've not even got enough money to get in anywhere. Exactly, we haven't got money because we can't get a job. We can't get a job because one, we're too young. Two, they can't even trust us. And three, we haven't got any experience. And we haven't got any experience is because they just keep moving us on. If they can't make money out of us, they'll just move us on. We haven't got anyone on our side. Oh, oh, these are gorgeous. Not had Tommy's for ages. You from round here then? Yeah, I'm from Middleton. I've been away for a bit though. What? Have you been inside? No, not prison. I'm in the army. Sometimes I think we're better off inside than living like this. No good. Mm. Why are you in such an hurry? We met a girl who told us about a boxer who fought for people in the boar's head. <laughs> was he drunk? Who? The boxer. Oh, no, you don't understand. Calm down. We sell it from the beginning. We were messing about in the graveyard and we met a girl near the talking with her face and she said he was Samuel Bamford and he'd get our voices back. The Sam Bamford Memorial up in the graveyard? And she wants to meet us at 24 sets tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Can we go? Hmm, I'll think about it. Oh. got a message. You have to go to the 24 steps tomorrow. What for? Because we're not in our room. Pardon? This girl said that we have to work together to fight for our voices. Sounds like Alexandra. No, she's called Samantha. Well, I'll text Alexandra and see what she knows about this. What have I actually just done? I started for make a change, lass. That's what that's just done. I don't know what I can change. Hey. That puts the mind to it, they can change out. I started change at grammar school in Manchester. And here. What was it? What was it? Let's tell you what it were. It was best school for many a mile. Let's tell you something else, you know. Gentlemen's sons from all over the country came to Middleton for received their education. High school and reading give me the ability and knowledge to try and right wrongs. Ask this how what changes, lass. Age, that change has done it. Clothes, inventions. But there's some things that never change, like greed and injustices. What changes did you make? We fought to uh, have a fair and just representation, just what Omni thought required just to survive. Fair and just representation like what? Well, that's like having the right to vote. The right to have a voice. The right to be listened to and the right to choose who represents your views and interests in Parliament when decisions are made. What is voting? Voting, lass, is what happens when there's an election. When you vote in an election, you're saying you'd like to represent your views when decisions are made in Parliament. The opinion of the country is decided on voting. Now then, if poor people in the country can't vote, who's going to represent their interests and opinions, and that's what I've all fought for. A fair and just representation in Parliament. Honestly, what can they arrest you for? You've done nothing wrong. I didn't even do anything wrong. Exactly, that's the thing. 
got a message. It better be good after the day I've had. Gotta go to the 24 steps tomorrow at 12 noon for a fight. You what? A fight who? A fight representation. Well, if it's kicking off, I'm going. Fight at 24 steps tomorrow, 12 noon. If you've got truth and conviction in what you're saying, lass, the rest of the words will look after themselves. Were you not nervous when you did your speech? Oh, aye. I'd be a liar if I said I weren't, and that's one thing I'm not. No, I will be. Why was you a parliamentary reformer? What is a reformer? It's when you want to change things or improve things for the better. Like people round here, they were happy with the lot. Right? They could hand loom weave in their own homes, put bread on table put coal on fire, then all that changed. Now, I've nothing against progression, lass, but when that progression comes at a cost, to ordinary folk that are not only going hungry but dying from it, that's enough. Why were people dying? After the introduction of the Corn Law, lass. Price of bread soared and wages were reduced. People were literally starving to death. There were disturbances in all manufacturing districts at country. There was one here in Middleton in 1812. Bottom of Wood Street, just know it. Oh, yeah, I know Wood Street. Aye, well, four men were killed on first day. My own wife and Mima watched it from a few yards away from where a young man were killed. What stopped them rioting? Scots Grey shooting them, lass. No, I mean, what stopped the people? I know what you mean. Reading did. The writings of William Cobbett were read by nearly every cottage earth in South Lancashire because he wrote about the true meaning and the cause of their suffering, which was misgovernment and the need for parliamentary reform. So instead of rights of destruction, we became organised. Hamden clubs were set up in many towns, but we had one here in Middleton. And because I was rather an expert writer, even though I say it myself, I was chosen secretary. Yeah, I bet you were. But I still don't understand what reformer means. A reformer, lass, is someone who wants to improve things for the better. Now, for centuries, our parliament was run by a small group of landowning men, whose only priority was their own power and prosperity. Only men with money and property rights could vote. What about women? Could they not vote? No, no women, regardless of wealth, could vote. So the Hamden Clubs petitioned Parliament to hold elections each year. And I suggested that all men on military lists should be entitled to vote. If you can fight for your country, then you should be able to vote for your government. And I consider that the pride and glory of my life to have merited the name Reformer. Adults are denying us our educational choices because of their obsession with school tables. And they call us lazy. Are we lazy? No! no. Come on! Are we? No. no! Millionaire MPs with a free university education voted to charge the poorest students £9,000 per year. And they say we're entitled. Do you feel entitled? No! no. The greed of the adults has polluted the land and the oceans. And they call us antisocial. We're live enough. Have you? Yeah! For too long now, young people have been treated like dirt. We have been banned from shopping centres, sports centres, even kicked out of the streets where we live. And they call the police on us! We are being labelled trouble causers, vermin, street rats, scallies. We are being tossed aside like flowers from a dustbin, and I'm not having it anymore. Come on, neither are we. Are we having it? Yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. Bring it out, please. We all did well this time. Are you smoking? Please, run! Oh, 
Oh, ho! Hey, how what's up? It's them idiots from the meeting. Why? What's gone on? It wasn't right. I mean, what she was saying was right, but it was the way that she was saying it. She got everyone really wound up, screaming and shouting. Oh, it proper kicked off. Then the police come and we all had to run off. Why are you speaking? I don't even know who she was. She just turned up, took over, and got everyone raging. Behaving like that just makes us all look bad. As if they don't think they're already. Well, get her out and get someone else in. It was Samantha who'd asked her to come, but it kicked off before she even got a chance to speak. What is it you want? I just want life to be fair, and now it is now. Listen, when you start getting a lot of people together like that, it needs to be organised, like it was in the army. It's too late now. They're all off the reds and ready to cause riots. Well, I think you need to speak to Samantha. Do you know where to find her? Ah, Christopher said he met her at some monument up at the graveyard. Yeah, Sam Bamford monument up there. He was a proper mid-legend, him. The original working class hero. Well, I've never even heard of him. I've never heard of Sam Bamford. Did not teach you about the Peterloo massacre at school. What's the Peterloo massacre? Well, that went well. I probably made everything worse. It went off. Listen, lass. Change will only come through peaceful means, not through destruction. Are you listening to me? I don't know how I'm going to get them to work together. I'm never going to be able to deliver a speech like Alexandra did. Imagine what would have happened if that meeting wouldn't have been stopped. There are things that need to be stopped, lass. But there's some that shouldn't. Like suspending the habeas corpus act. Sounds like something from Harry Potter. No, is he from Borgia? Hmm, it's Latin, for you may have the body. Can't you have like that then? Hey. It's a law, lass. Bring thy body to court. Each and every person in this country has the right to appear in court and defend themselves and not be locked in prison without charge. Suspending that law took away the very liberty and freedom that we were born with. Why was it suspended? Do you remember that revolution I told you about in France? Mm. Well, after that, the government started to worry that the same thing could happen here. We all thought things would get better after the war had ended. But they didn't. Things got a lot harder for working people. You see, people couldn't earn enough money to pay the high taxes on food, and they were literally starving to death, lass. People were angry at the injustices of what were happening, and they still had no representation. They're the only hope we had was to carry on with reformers meetings, didn't we? But the authorities, worried about revolution, had to put a stop to that, didn't they? So open meetings were banned, and they had to be held in secret. It was like the sun of freedom had gone down, lass. And a dark oppression had closed over us. So you're telling me you can get nicked just for going to a meeting? You can read, can't you? You can read that. Bamford was a reformer. Went to be so, wasn't he? And he suffered for his faith. So this is Sam Bamford. Oh God, you scared me and I thought you were someone else. Are you all right? Yeah, I will be. I'm so sorry about before. It wasn't your fault, was it? I just... I thought you might need some help organising the next meeting. After that? Are you serious? Yeah, I am. She was right about everything she said. We've been thrown away like flowers in a dustbin. There's so many things wrong, not just for us. I just want to help make things better for people. Excuse me, you were at the meeting with Alexandra, weren't you? Yeah, why? Well, I organised that meeting, do you know where she is? A video from the last meeting went viral. Oh, I'm sorry, it went mad. <laughs> so she's grounded. <laughs> We're having another meeting this Saturday at Bullshit Club.
I've had a word with them all. They're coming tomorrow. Am I getting this right? You was arrested twice just for going to a meeting? Hey, lass. As a reformer, I have never favoured extreme measures. Let me tell thee something. When fellow weavers from Lancashire planned a blanket march to London to petition the Prince Regent, I told them, I warned them, that the authorities were never going to let a mass of people leave this town. And if they did, cold and wet on walk could kill most of them, they're already dying through hunger. Then magistrates went up right up before they'd even set off. What's the Riot Act? Well, that's another law, in it, lass? Which states, if 12 or more people gather unlawfully to cause a disturbance of the peace or refuse to leave, they'll be arrested. So did they get arrested? Oh, aye. Hundreds were. Some were held for nine months without trial. The blanket merch ended badly. People were angry and wanted their revenge. The day after, a messenger came to Middleton and asked us to carry night attacks out on Manchester. I said it was unlawful, inhuman and cowardly and I'd have no do with it. And if that weren't enough, another messenger came to my ass at Middleton Neat, wanted Middleton reformers pick up arms, <laughs> march to London and assassinate Parliament. Why didn't you report them? Why? Because by then government spies had infiltrated reformers' clubs and then plots were that ludicrous. I believe the authorities already knew about them and probably had an hand in plotting them. Where did they arrest you? Alcrington Woods, lass. I'd just left my friend Ely. He'd been over to Erdwick to one of them secret meetings. He were convinced that King's men were after him. He were probably right and all. Even though I've warned him many, many times about the dangers of attending them meetings, well, I had to get my to Middleton safe for dinner. I were on my way home, and I was taken hold of by Nadine, the Deputy Constable of Manchester. He said I was King's prisoner, and him and eight well-armed police officers marched me off to the doctor's house. Where was your wife? Her Mima. Why, she rushed in, demanded to know why I'd been taken prisoner. One of them constables threatened to shoot her. <sighs> Not what my lass did. She pushed straight past him and clung to me. By this time, an angry mob had gathered outside and somebody threw a brick through the window. <sighs> it miss, miss Nadine's head by that much. <laughs> so much so, he said if anybody threw anything else, he'd shoot into a crowd. Know what he said to me after? That's a bunch of rough devils in this here, Middleton. Where did they take you? New Bailey Prison in Salford, first lass. Ely and several other men from the Merwick meetings were brought in a couple of days after. I were really surprised when they took me to London to appear before the Secretary of State, chained to them. When I got a chance to speak to them in private, I realised that they're all terrified of betrayal from each other. So I tried to unite them by again to say that the meetings they'd attended was to raise money for prisoners' families. We were taken to Cold Bathfield Prison and waited to be taken before the Privy Council. Now, even though I'd been arrested, imprisoned and transported with these men, they all knew that not at any time had I had any connections or anything to do with the private meetings. Did you get a chance to speak? They asked to hear my response to the charge of high treason. I said, I am a parliamentary reformer, and I always will be until reform has been obtained. But I have never advocated violence to obtain reform. I have always been a friend to peace and order, and I believe that reform does not require privacy, and only reform, in my opinion, will save this country from revolution. Did they let you go then? I was held on suspicion of high treason when I was released without charge. Unfortunately, my fellow prisoners weren't. When did they get out? The rest of the prisoners, they were released by January 1818. My friend Ely, he returned home round and plump. I met another prisoner on his way home from Middleton, James Leach. He had an air of superiority about him and seemed somewhat distant from me. Why? Maybe because he had cash in his pockets. 
I later found out that this young man and his relatives had been secretly spreading lies about me, saying that I was a spy for the government and I bought my freedom by betraying him and my companions. That's proper snide. You'd never do that. Aye. It wounded my spirit, lass. The thought that my people would think I would ever betray them. And I got all that. Jamie Lee, are you all right? Do you need some help? No, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm okay. No, you don't look it. I'm all right, I'm all right. What's happened, Franny? Oh, I can't see it makes sense of anything. I haven't been myself in ages. Since when? Since I got all the forces. Why? What happened? Oh, no, I can't talk about it. I can't talk about that. Have you had any help? Yeah, I've had the help. No one's interested. I mean, look at me now, living like this. What have I got? I ain't got anything. Nightmares and guilt, that's all I've got. Why guilt? What are you talking about, Franny? Guilt, full of guilt. Guilt because I came back. Came back and now I'm living like this. Massacre. The Manchester meeting, lass. After the authorities restored habeas corpus, reformers' demonstrations and meetings were held all over the country in the summer of 1819. Now we wanted our Manchester meeting to be different from anything ever seen in England before. The press had always portrayed the working classes as a dirty, ragged mob, and we were determined to change that opinion of ourselves. So we would be orderly. We would be clean, we would be sober, but above all, we would be peaceful. Spinners and weavers from all over Middleton were taught how to march in order by old soldiers. We were then requested by Mr Hunt and the committee not to take any weapons with us to the meetings. No, I didn't like the thought of walking my neighbours into a crowd that was averse to us but that means to protect ourselves. Who's Mr Hunt? Henry Hunt. He was a gentleman reformer, lass. I knew him from the Amden clubs. He was much loved by the working classes, famous for his rousing speeches. He was to be lead speaker at the Manchester meeting. The Earl of Middleton were here on the morning of Monday, the 16th of August, 1819. Some to go to the meeting, others just to see the procession and our colours. What are colours? Our banners, lass. Middleton had a blue one with golden inscriptions which said unity and strength, liberty and fraternity and a green one with golden letters. Suffrage universal, Parliament's annual. How many people were here? With the Rochdale folk, about 6,000. And I can honestly say we looked the most splendid group. Everyone was scrubbed clean the men all wore their Sunday white shirt with neck scarf. There was about 200 women, all in their finery, and a small number of children. And then I addressed the crowd. Good people of Middleton and our good neighbours. We are going to the most important meeting ever held for parliamentary reform. Now then, we will stay in order 
throughout the walk. If we are insulted, we will not respond. If we are arrested, you will offer no resistance. When the meeting is over, we will all leave together and not stay drinking in town. And that goes for you, my good friend, Dr. Healy. My words were met with loud cheers and the music struck up and the banners flashed in the sunlight and we set off towards Manchester. We gathered even more folk at Erpere and Blakely. I didn't think they'd let us enter Manchester, but when I saw the roads open, I felt assured. When we entered Manchester, we were cheered by the townsfolk. We went past St Peter's Church, into Peter Street, and then we walked into a, a wide, unbuilt space. Eh, lass, eh, were a crowd of 60,000 working class people opened up to receive us. With low cheers, we took our place in the centre with our colours. Mr Hunt and his group arrived, took to the stage E, took off his white hat and addressed the people. I had left the stage when he began to speak. I'd, I'd urged on many occasions and I didn't think it contained anything new. I'd just got to the outside of the crowd when I heard a noise coming from the church, so I stopped and looked. And that's when I saw the soldiers with swords in hands on horseback. So go on then, why have you dragged us all down here? Hurry up, we've not got all day. Why? Where have you got to go? Places. Some of us have busy lives, you know. Places? Like where? Where can you go where you're not going to get moved on? That's why I brought us all here in secret, because I know you're sick and tired of people telling you what you can and can't do. Yeah, we're sick of it, but what's that got to do with you? Well, it's to do with all of us. That's why you're all here. Because we all share the same frustration. We're sick of being treated like dirt. And sitting here talking isn't going to change anything, is it? I say we're showing what we can really do and start breaking windows. Yeah, let's break some windows. Like Come that. on. Stop it. It's about getting together. There's strength in numbers. If we put our heads together, we can get it right. What can we change for this bunch of kids from mid? You'll be surprised what people from mid have done in the past. Yeah, but Paul Scholes from Chad. I'm on about Sam Bamford. Is he from Chad? No, he was from mid. He lived up on Cheapside near the shops. His monument looks over mid. He lived here over 200 years ago. He was a weaver, but he was really good with his words. He didn't like the way people were being treated. They worked so hard and they didn't even have enough money to buy food. Sounds like me mum. People were starving and dying just because they're poor. They got arrested for going to these meetings. He led 6,000 people from mid to go to that meeting in Manchester. 60,000 working class people was there. When they got there, soldiers rushed him. 18 got killed. Four of them was women and a little kid. Over 600 got hurt. Stand fast, I cried. You see, lass, the cavalry, they, they couldn't penetrate our compact mass of human bodies. So they waved the swords over their heads and started to cut through our naked elder pans on our defence defence. They were chopping through limbs. There, was, there were cries of, break, break, they're killing them in front crowd for a moment held. Then there was a rush, like an headlong sea and the sound of a low thunder. There was screams and prayers coming from the people trying to escape. Within 10 minutes of the havoc starting, 
The field was a quiet and almost deserted space. All over the field were, were strewn bonnets and caps and hats and shawls and shoes, all torn and bloody and trampled. People were helping the wounded or cutting off the dead. Mounds of human beings still remained where they'd fallen, trampled and cut. Some were still groaning, lass. Others had wide eyes and gasping for breath. And others... They'd breathe no more. All they wanted was to be treated right, just like us. So what are you saying we should do then? First of all, we need to change what people think of us. Smashing things will just get us locked up. We need to show that we can work together and do something positive. Like what? I thought that maybe we should put on a benefit to raise money to help the homeless. We should name it after Sam Bamford. I can get Scotless to play. And I'll bring loads of people from school. We'll need a venue. Any ideas? Doesn't your auntie manage the old boar's head? Um, yeah, yeah, why? Could you ask her if we could use that big room? Well, I'm gonna have to now, aren't I? Well, that's perfect. Sam Bamford ain't the old boar's head. She's really all right, you know. Oh, Savannah, she's such a nice person. It's just that her mum's been struggling since her dad's left. She hadn't even got enough money to put the electric on. That's why she's always charging her phone in the shopping centre. She's just so sad inside, and that's why she takes out on everyone else. Yeah, and I do really, I can relate to that, but I'm trying to... So we come in tomorrow dinner time to start setting up? Oh, thanks for all your help. Honestly, I really do appreciate it. Right, I'm just going to go to the toilet and watch my back. Whoa, you can't do that. I don't like her, she's up to something. Can I borrow your phone, please? Did you get arrested again? Oh, I laughed. I was at home in bed. About two in the morning, when I woke up with sound of feet marching down the street. They increased in number as they get nearer, then they're a bang, bang, bang on do her. I said, I said, hello. Who's making that dinner at this time and eat? And this voice said, Um do her. I said, Um do her. Who were there that I should open me doer to it dead and eat? Open doer, or we'll break it with constables and we want thee. So I opened it. And my visitors were Mr. Naden. Huh. Along with a posse of police and soldiers from the 32nd Regiment, Naden informed me that he had a warrant against me for our treason. I said, I'm ready to come with Mr. Nadin. <laughs> but they'll now convict me. And if that does, my blood will kill me. And then they searched me ass for weapons. They didn't find out. Then they ordered one of his men for put me in chains. I said, nah. Is that really necessary, Mr. Nadin? I'll give him my word of honour. That's not an attempt to escape. But it's outside you do his duty. So they handcuffed me. And that's when they marched me out onto the street. Well, why did they take you? New Bailey at first, lass. 
than Lancaster Castle. The two cut into a crowded room, was in a compartment surrounded with iron spikes. And there, we were told that we were people of a wicked and violent disposition. And then on the 16th of August, we'd unlawfully assembled 60,000 people with sticks and clubs and banners with inflammatory inscriptions for the purpose of causing great disturbance and a riot. Did you come back to Middleton? Aye, but not for long. Trial started in March in York. The evidence against me was that I'd been seen giving marching orders to thousands of men in Middleton and that then along with others, plan to surround every route into Manchester and attack it. But when I gave me evidence, I told them why we trained for this meeting. I said, for years, working class folk have been treated, treated badly by press. Now, was it not only natural that these poor insulted people would want change the way they were viewed? And for that purpose alone was the drilling introduced. Now, we wanted to give an example of peace and good order. And I'd insisted that no sticks were taken and we're left in peace and good order. And that our fathers and mothers and wives and children were with us. And this is what they describe as one vast army marching to invade Manchester. Poor, forlorn, defenceless Manchester. This was the army ready to fight for Mr. Hunt. With bare hands and arms interlocked, impenetrable to everything, everything, except the sabres of the Manchester Yeomanry Cavalry. Anyhow, they found me guilty. They found me guilty of assembling with unlawful banners, unlawful assembly, with the purpose of moving and inciting subjects of the king to contempt of hatred of the government and constitution of the realm. We had to go before the king's bench for judgment, lass. Was you allowed to speak at the king's bench? Oh, I. And I spoke considerably, and from the heart. I said, I solemnly and firmly assure your lordships that never again will I advise my countrymen to show that degree of patience. Not until every drop of blood shed on that day is deeply and amply atoned for. And it is me that is brought here for punishment. <laughs> and I said this last, not from a spirit of vengeance, but from a, a high sense of wrongs and injuries inflicted upon my country. And from an indignant feeling that justice had been denied. Hmm. And then they sentenced me to one year in Lincoln jail.
shelf up. Where could you put these books back on the table for me? book in the library. It's researched done by a proper historian. Listen. The illegible document is the rough notes of the questioning of Bamford and the other prisoners of 1817 before the Privy Council in Whitehall. It provides evidence for Bamford's account in passages and refutes claims that he earned his release by informing on others. Evidence? What evidence? It says that someone called George Bradbury gave evidence against the others. He says that you never went to any of them secret meetings. He clears your name. So we got out the same day as you did. George Bradbury, eh? Aye. I remember the day he got out. That's right. He were bragging to anybody who'd listen. George Bradbury. I would never have suspected him, lass. Thank you very much. Who's this historian? Well, it says at the end, Dr. Robert Poole. Robert Poole. Well, if I ever met the man, I'd gladly shake his hand. Now, you go in there and show him what you can do. They all hate me. You all think I'm snide? You are a fellow wordsmith, just like me. Sure. I'm really sorry, Samantha. Here's your book. It was Savannah. She really shouldn't have been Say something. Yeah, go for it. <sighs> this is the evolution of an industrial past. This techno revolution, a cloak of illusion. Shrouds all generations under the gloss of smart this, smart that, and artificial intelligence, which ironically fuels lack of a need for intelligence and leads to the fact that we are no longer curious. But then why should we be when there is a whole world of information available for free? From the stroke of the screen to the tone of one's voice or the tap of a key. We don't ask why, we ask Google. We don't ask friends, we ask Siri. We are losing identity. Do you feel that we're free? We, as working class kin, as human beings, need to regain the ability to speak to one another in order for us to hear one another, for the chance to care for one another so that we can help one another, show strength, find unity, true liberty, for my fraternity. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Yeah. It's all right, love. What you knew the kids are doing are brilliant. And it was out on the stage, you know, he told me she's been winding you up all along. Could you please forgive her? Find it in your heart to forgive her. Come here. I'm sorry. It's alright, we've all made mistakes. <laughs>